our second day in Chile, we visited another boatyard in the town of Loda, which is south of Concepcion, and uh, it's quite a little town. I mean, there's few places in the United States exactly like this. It's so nestled up against the shoreline, and uh, you know, it's a busy little town, and yet in the distance behind the town, it's so forested and everything. You know, it's just amazing that the population is so concentrated right against the waterfront right here. There must be other things other than the boatyard that keeps this little town going. I know that these towns used to be coal mining towns, it was a couple hour drive getting here to Loda from Concepcion and along the way we saw a tremendous amount of lumber on the highway. I think most all of that supported the paper industry. There was, you know, some trucks that went by with building material on it, but the paper industry down here is really big. They, they harvest areas, they clear cut and replant, and those areas are owned by the paper companies and it's designated for that use. That's not where they get the lumber for these wooden boats that they're building. They must have other areas. I just think it would be fantastic to see the whole country and see the forest where they cut the um, cypress that they plank these boats with. But look at this town. Look at the waterfront. Look at the tidal pools along the water. When the tide goes out, it leaves all these tidal pools and the rocks along there. And uh, it, it's just beautiful. There must be a fantastic amount of sea life in those areas. There's some small boats out there fishing. We've seen quite a few of those. And, uh, you know, they seem to be throwing like a crab pot overboard. So I think they're crabbing in small boats, double-ended small boats. Here's a soccer field right on the waterfront. What a great place to have it. It must be a pleasure to play soccer here. I wonder what the rivalries are between the towns down here. This must be fantastic when other towns come in to play soccer. And look right behind the soccer field. The housing is kind of like a stadium in itself. You know, I imagine you can stay right in the houses on the porches or whatever and watch soccer just about any time you want because soccer is really a popular sport down here. Football, they call it football down here. In the States we call it soccer. Football. It's a football field. It's a great spot for more reasons than one. It's got deep water, protected water out front, so they don't have any problems, you know, on a daily basis hauling or launching boats. And uh, it's got some anchorage out in front, I noticed, with uh, some boats, you know, moored. Being able to work here must be great because you don't have to travel 50 miles to get to work. Most of these people that work in these boatyards are really married to it and what happens is they live right behind the boatyard, either up in the town or directly behind the boatyard. So when they wake up in the morning to go to work, they slide their boots on, they're already at work. This boatyard is quite a bit different than the last boatyard we visited. This boatyard has a hauling facility, which is just great because uh, the other boatyards don't have hauling facilities. They only built wooden boats and uh, basically what they would do after they built the boat would be drag it down the beach into the water, never to be seen again. They need to be able to take it somewhere else to have it hauled to, you know, to service it. And uh, this is a uh, boatyard right here has intentions of being able to service all kinds of boats. In this boatyard right now, we have steel boats uh, being painted, uh, repaired, probably altered. We have wooden boats. So, you know, this boatyard is really quite something. They've altered the waterfront to uh, support the boatyard itself so that, you know, weather wouldn't come in and wash it away and different things like that. They've gone to quite an extent, you know, to create this boatyard and it is something else. It's got capabilities, this boatyard right here. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. It's fairly industrial, actually. It's got a fantastic railway that they put in down into the water, and uh, no messing around, that railway is on steel pylons, and they have intentions of being able to use that railway for years and years and years. They've installed this marine railway. It's got a cradle that goes down onto the railway, I don't know how deep it is or what kind of draft this railway will take, but uh, this has been a tremendous effort to get this accomplished, and I, I really have to hand it to them for this. So, you know, they've got a hauling facility that's going to work for them perfectly. This boat yard is more interested at this point in time, or has been, in uh, uh, repair work. So they haul boats out and launch boats here and do uh, repair work over here at the, uh, at the side track. So what they do is they send this uh, cradle down into the water and float the boat up onto it and adjust the poppets up against the bottom of the boat and then haul the railway up into this position. At that point in time, they can taxi this top rail 
over onto the side tracking system in here and then they can side track the boats down they've got two different sets of rails right in here or three different sets of rails actually and they can taxi boats down there and then side track them off into different positions so that they can uh, have uh, work done on them they've got a boat that they're working on right now down at the other end of the railway right here and i believe what's going on here is some sandblast and that's a steel boat so they're sandblasting the bottom of it and uh, they're preparing to put, I'm sure, a new coat of paint on it or also to uh, do some repairs to the steel. And this is a town that used to be a uh, coal mining town years ago and since that time it hasn't had any tremendous amount of industry or anything. Today they're trying to convert this town and these areas into tourist attractions and uh, I think they're already tourist attractions really but they don't have any tourists. So uh, they've taken some tremendous strides already and I think some of their ideas is to get involved with wooden boat building and that's exactly what I'm interested in. So we're here uh, uh, doing an interview and doing some speaking to the University of Concepcion and uh, we've got a tremendous amount of cooperation. I laid the foundations for this to, to keep on developing for years to come. Now let me ask you this, how, how interested do you think the younger people in the country are? Tourism is here to stay. Right. El joven quiere cosas nuevas. The young person wants new things. And they had a lot of questions, but what they were really after wasn't to know about my abilities or past experiences in boat building itself or techniques, although we did talk about techniques, all kinds of different techniques. It just kept coming back to YouTube and tips from a shipwright and the exposure that we got. Whitford, Rhode Island, in the USA. And as soon as we started posting videos, we got an immediate result. And of course, it kept building and building. And that's exactly what would happen if they posted something as substantial as what they want to accomplish. I understand. Uh, I think you're on to something here. I really do. It was a little bit of a surprise to see the news media show up like they did. You know, we're not really used to that, but it's okay with us. You know, I do spend some time in front of a camera, so, you know, it didn't shake me up any, and it actually was fun. After an informal meeting with the press, we went inside the Union Hall for lunch. It was great to meet different people of all ages interested in boat building, especially wooden boat building. There was women interested in wooden boat building, elderly people, you know, it made me wonder what their background might have been, some younger people, you know, just all interested in the same sort of thing. You know, they all gathered here for this purpose. We had a lot of shared enthusiasm about boat building, you know, about work itself and what this town might turn into, you know, and I knew it was about trying to turn these towns into, uh, you know, tourist attractions and tourist attractions is what they are. I do believe that many cities around the world survive on tourism as well <laughs> as marine tourism, solely <coughs> marine tourism, you know, Newport, Rhode Island being one of them, it's a, it's a marine tourist town. The building of a Spanish galleon, which is one of the things that it seems to me that uh, is of interest, would be just a, a fantastic attraction around the world, needs to be exposed. The more interest you develop in it and the more that you can show them that you really have an attraction and you have the ability to support them while they're here seeing that attraction. You know, rooms and hotels and food and all these different things and wonderful faces and smiles and, and the whole carrying on of tradition about wooden boats and the whole historical thing that they're trying to bring back. They'd kind of love the world to know about the Spanish war that they had, you know, 400 years of war, wow, you know, and there's diving to be had. There's a lot of boats sunk out there and some of the most beautiful and some of the best shipwreck diving in the world goes on off the coast of Santa Maria. So that is one of the things that they want to be an attraction to tourists. And I asked them questions about what they retrieved, some of the things they retrieved. I asked them if they brought up any dead eyes and different things that we used in the rigging off the Spanish galleons and they said they had, but they had given them 
most of them away. So, you know, there's plenty more of them down there. There's a tremendous attraction down there, and I think that uh, it's really a worthwhile thing to uh, make it a tourist attraction. I think people in this world need to know what the scope of this uh, situation used to be around the world with these wooden ships fighting each other and all this kind of stuff. It's really, it's really something. You don't get to see it, but uh, they actually have intentions of building some Spanish galleons in these boat yards uh, to uh, you know, attract people and be able to take people out on them. Well, I think it's safe to say that we've made more new friends and uh, really a friendship is special to me because I think that we have an understanding about what we've gone through in life and different things like that and it really, and it makes me want to come back, it makes me want to come down here and kind of act like a tourist. It also makes me want to come down here and work. It's wonderful to see this kind of thing going on, be part of it. It's really, really done a lot for us. It's brought a smile to my face, and I think that uh, it would bring a smile to anybody's face to actually see towns like this transition into something that they're trying to do like they are. We're on to the next boatyard tomorrow, and they're doing some very interesting things in that boatyard, so stay on board for another episode.